Greetings. I'm Marquita Shambly, Associate Provost for Diversity and Inclusion and Chief Diversity Officer at Wayne State. I also have the pleasure of being the chair of this year's Wayne State Juneteenth Celebration Planning Committee. On behalf of President M. Roy Wilson and Interim Provost Lori Lazan Claybo, I want to welcome you to the opening of the inaugural Juneteenth celebration at Wayne State University. Juneteenth is a celebratory time which commemorates the end of slavery in the United States when, in 1865, Union General Gordon Granger told enslaved African Americans in Galveston, Texas, that the Civil War had ended and that they were free. Juneteenth is the oldest nationally celebrated commemoration of the ending of slavery in the United States. In 1980, Texas became the first state to designate Juneteenth as a holiday. Since that time, some 45 states at least recognized the day. Last year, for example, Governor Gretchen Whitmer released a proclamation declaring June 19th as Juneteenth Celebration Day in Michigan. At Wayne State, we're pleased to be celebrating Juneteenth with a variety of virtual events and activities, beginning with this opening celebration. The decision to commemorate Juneteenth came about as the result of a resolution passed by the Wayne State Student Senate and supported by the Wayne State leadership. We're grateful to the students for exercising their leadership and the result has been not only this week of events, but three pre-Juneteenth week events held in February, April, and May this year. The Juneteenth Celebration Planning Committee has been meeting since January of this year to create these events that we're looking forward to this week. We'll have lectures and panel discussions on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, June 15, 16, and 17, and conclude on Saturday, June 19th with our annual African-American graduation celebration where we will recognize Wayne State graduates. Our featured event on Wednesday, June 16th at 7 p.m. is an interview with Hannibal Johnson, noted historian, author, and expert on the 1921 Black Wall Street massacre in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The interview will be followed by a panel of local scholars who will discuss parallels between Tulsa and Detroit. I encourage you to visit and explore the Juneteenth website at wayne.edu slash diversity slash Juneteenth to learn more about the week's activities. And please join us for all of our featured events. You can watch them all on wayne.edu slash live at their scheduled times. All events will be recorded for future viewing. Juneteenth represents a pivotal moment in US history, particularly for African-Americans. It's a reminder of freedom and emancipation that were hard won and that the struggles for equity for African-American people continues to this day. We hope you will take time to learn more about Juneteenth and about other important pieces of US history during the course of this week and beyond. Black history is American history after all. Thank you for joining our celebration.
Happy Juneteenth, y'all! Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Okay, if you're black, brown, and living in the USA, today is a day to rejoice! Woo! Yes. Yes. If you're white, okay, hi. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Yeah, so if you're white, it's so good to finally see y'all repping the Black Lives Matter movement. Oh wait, is Crawford going to be open yet? Uh, yeah, it is soon. Okay, so before you go and get fitted for your costume or get your tickets to Hamilton or Hades Town, we just want to take a moment to celebrate this important American holiday and to share the work that we still have to do. It doesn't stop just because the TKTS line opens back up, okay? Am I mm, right? Yeah. You're right, you're right. I say that this has been a weird ride barely scratches the surface of this science fiction nightmare we've lived through as humans being. Let's take a temperature check on current events, shall we? Okay. All right. A global pandemic. Check. Yeah. 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 A presidential. Former. Right, okay. Thank Form you. A former presidential meltdown with hourly Twitter tirades and the shucking of all responsibility. Check. A country that isn't just divided by color, gender, sexuality, ethnicity, but also whether to stay at home or to reopen, whether to mask or not to mask. Check. And as a Black American living in this dystopian nightmare, well, hopefully living it isn't just a nightmare it's an american nightmare you know many people assume that just because we have less like one black president and a democratically controlled oval office mm. and congress that what racism is over and that yeah. black people just have free and equal status as americans but really, the status of black people as Americans has been hotly contested since, what, the Emancipation Proclamation. That will-they-won't-they they trials that follow the murders of Emmett Till to George Floyd become an ad nauseum cycle. It's frustrating. It's saddening. It's disheartening. And overall, just overwhelming. But here we are on the edge of another Juneteenth. Juneteenth, June 19th, 1865. A holiday I never knew existed. Wait, what? <laughs> I, I can't even pinpoint what I didn't even know was a holiday. But I can't pinpoint what my family didn't know. It was of course during the trendy summer of Black Lives Matter movement. Still then, I barely knew what it was. So shout out to the education system for once again suppressing the history of African Americans. Oh. Okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America. America. When was the last time y'all sang the national anthem? Honestly, I stopped singing it after Kaepernick started kneeling. Yeah, I realized it was mostly white people asking me to sing it. Hmm, interesting. Right? <laughs> also, there's that mysterious third verse that's like kind of about slavery. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I feel like we should just make the black national anthem the national anthem. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Wait, there's a black national anthem? Uh, well, Y'all know there's a black national anthem, right? Lift every voice and sing till the earth and heaven ring. Oh, I know it. Okay, I, I know it now. Okay, because I was about to take your card. Oh, it's okay. It's been threatened many times. Oh. I'm from Macomb County. Oh. That's new, okay? <laughs> <laughs> us and it affects us and how we're always 
refreshed and not to educate non black people on what it is and other topics and issues regarding us. I I felt ashamed, embarrassed. That is when I realized that we had fully assimilated into a culture that made us celebrate a holiday that, that wasn't for us. When we keep constantly celebrating 4th of July Independence Day, knowing that us and our ancestors weren't free. We keep fitting into this status quo with how proud we are to be an American, right? We are proud to be a part of a country that oppressed us knowing damn well we would be nothing without them. They would be nothing without us. French. And we are proud to be a part of a country that loves and appropriates our culture more than they actually love us. <laughs> we are proud to be a part of a country that still views us as three fifths of a person. Ooh, okay, we are proud to be a part of a country that still doesn't view us as equal. And we are proud to be a part of a country that, God, like, we are proud to be a part of a country that doesn't acknowledge you. We are proud to be a part of a country that still erases and sugarcoats our history. Juneteenth. June 19, 1865, a holiday that you, me, the entire United States never existed. You're so right about that. I remember reading maybe a paragraph about Juneteenth in a history textbook, like in high school or something. Really? But yeah, but that was it. Huh, you know, typical. We didn't talk about it. There was no exploration of like the historical context or the significance or traditions or anything. Just the basic facts. General Gordon Granger and the announcement. That's good. June 19th, 1865, General Gordon Granger arrives in Galveston, Texas. As one of his first orders of business, he read the following to the people of Texas. The people of Texas are informed that in accordance with a proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. Wait, 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 wait. sorry, wait. Did you, did you repeat that? Yeah, what? All slaves are free. Oh, free! Yeah! We free! We free! We free! We free! All, all, we free! Yeah. I appreciate the enthusiasm, free. but... You know, slavery being your entire life, all that you've known, and then all of a sudden it's over? Over. Very bad quotation. The rest of this language is jarring too. This involves an absolute equality of rights and rights of property between former masters and slaves, and the connection heretofore existing between them that then becomes employer and hired laborer. Huh? Whoa, what? Okay. Was there minimum wage? Not even that. It was what? a loophole, essentially, for slavery. Oh, so like how in textbooks today they call it unpaid internships. Exactly. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. In Texas, wow. no less. Of course, yeah. Makes sense. Last place that <laughs> the slaves were, the people who were enslaved were freed. <laughs> the irony. Ah. Well, I am glad my textbook did not say that stuff. Mm -hmm. But, man, the nothing that it said, you know, like... Nothing about what took them so long, no exploration of the historical significance or how important it is, or nothing about traditions or symbols. No celebration. Just these basic facts. No talking about why it took an extra two years after the Emancipation Proclamation. And why it took another cotton season for many other people. They need, they need to get their money, okay? They always, it's, <laughs> you know, they they're greedy, they're yeah. greedy in America. Yeah. You know, keeping Juneteenth from students feels as deliberate as General Gordon Granger's a slow <laughs> march to Texas. Yeah. Telling Ooh. students just enough to be like, um, actually, we did teach about that without giving them the tools to understand it or critically engage with American history is a continued sin. It's like, what are they afraid of? That students will know the truth and then realize that no atonement has been made for black Americans and want it? Yeah. Well, great. 
We're ready for that moment. Let's have it. It's time. What do we think? If we ignore it, it'll go away? No. We have to face our history head on. Honesty is the first step to love. I just, I just can't get over it. Like hundreds and thousands of slave people were free? And they didn't even know it? <laughs> and the Union wasn't even in a rush to tell them either. Yeah. And their newfound freedom wasn't exactly welcome either. Many people who tried to leave were murdered by plantation owners who didn't want their property running off. This brings a whole new perspective to the monuments in history today, doesn't it? Yeah. Juneteenth needs to be a federal holiday. Yeah. And in fact, a young senator named Barack Obama introduced legislation about that, but it still has yet to pass. Of course. Well, yeah, there's also the anti-lynching bill that's still sitting in the hands of our congressmen and women. So, you know, it'd be really nice if we could have Juneteenth be a federal holiday and get those bills passed like we see all of the other bills getting passed with a quickness. As these protests and meaningful conversations hopefully continue to lean towards some actual change, I just want to take a moment to talk specifically to my black friends and family. Celebrate today. But also, if you need to rest, do it. Protect your energy, okay? Because we know how long this road has been and will continue to be. We will have justice and equality. We will. To my white friends, and my white adjacent friends and family, yes, I'm talking to people who are light-skinned like me and who are white. Please remember to listen. Stop for a second. When you feel uncomfortable, you feel defensiveness come up, when you're hearing about these things for the first, first time, just take a deep breath, take a step, and just absorb what you're hearing. And then come back. Please stay in this for the long haul. We need everybody in this fight. <laughs> okay, okay, oh, okay. Today, today, I honor my grandpa and my uncle Bob. My grandpa for educating me and bringing to light our history through countless and countless and countless and countless films and documentaries on the History Channel. <laughs> And from my Uncle Bob, who is the Assistant District Attorney in Philadelphia, for fighting for children to have a place in this world. Okay, today I honor my grandmothers, who taught me the value of speaking up for yourself and for others, who taught me the healing power of compassion. It's something that I hope as I Continue growing in this world that I can model for other people. I want to create safe spaces and brave spaces for BIPOC artists to come together mm -hmm. to speak up and use their voices to connect and heal. I honor my parents. You know, they've always instilled a sense of pride within me and who I am and where I come from, and the appreciation for community and a desire to serve others. When I was younger, we would always volunteer at like soup kitchens or um, at school drives, giving supplies. And I would like to continue doing that, you know, allowing children to eat or get the necessary supplies that they need for a quality education. That's really necessary and something that I wish to continue when I get older. Mm. Uh, today, I honor my friends Kevin, Jason, and Marcus, who work in my community back home to make sure that white people and black people are crossing those community lines to have conversations like this and connecting folks with resources that they need and giving kids opportunities to grow and learn and I really want to emulate that model that they said you know having these difficult conversations owning when I make a mistake showing up and being there to help think of creative solutions for things and make sure everybody has the opportunity to be who they want to be Thanks, Morgan. Yeah, no problem. So with that, 
grab a strawberry soda. <laughs> and I light up the grill, light up the grill, and take a moment to celebrate this day. June 19th, 2021, which marks my 35th birthday. <laughs> and a mere 156 years since Black Americans have been freed. What if I told you we were all the same? Would you recognize my face? Our shared history connects us through the years. Look deeper. We, we rose from, from the ashes, ashes of our country, country tis of thee. We fought while the ramparts we watched kept our freedom far from free. This, this true, true Independence, Independence Day is our nation's chance for revival. revival. Our, our people's survival depends, depends on collectively thriving. Educate yourself and celebrate our Educate yourself and celebrate our exaltation. Wake up and stop waiting for the time to say we shall overcome and start creating the future today.